Hey everybody, so as you know, we are working on how to reverse climate change by removing a billion tons of carbon dioxide from the air between now and 2030. And so we've talked about the gaps, right? We've talked about the need for financing. We've need to talk about the, the, the gap in messaging. We've talked about uh, technology gaps across the different methods of carbon removal, direct air capture, biochar, enhanced rock weathering, oceans, even things people didn't know existed before a couple of years ago starting to come online. Today, I want to focus on direct air capture. This summer, we launched a direct air capture program focused on later stage teams working on direct air capture. These are teams that have raised a couple million dollars. They've built a prototype. They've got it up and running, and they're looking at raising tens of millions of dollars. And what we're hearing is these teams are struggling to find storage for the carbon that they're going to be removing. What they're finding are storage companies that they can partner with, but those companies can be either uh, far away from where they're planning to build their facility, or the storage is developing too slowly to match up with the timeline of the startup company. So not having a storage partner makes it hard for these startups to get customers. Because if you're at the stage where you've got a facility up and running, a customer wants to be able to see that you're storing the carbon that they're paying for. So then this lack of customers makes it hard to then go get investors. Because at the stage where you're raising tens of millions of dollars, investors are going to want to see that you have paying customers ready to buy tens of millions of dollars of, of, of carbon. Um, and, and if customers are holding off because you don't have the ability to store it, that's really key. So we're going to see, uh, because of this challenge, if nothing changes, we're going to see direct air capture startups fail because they're not able to get the storage they need, which leads to a lack of customers and a lack of investment. I talked to one company that's working on raising tens of millions of dollars, and they said this is their number one issue right now, finding storage for their future facility. This is where sh shared storage comes in. So imagine being able to locate uh, direct air capture companies alongside each other and sharing the cost of storage and the cost of operations across a couple different carbon removal companies doing direct air capture. So this is the, this is the U.S. Department of Energy's whole vision for direct air capture hubs. It's this brilliant way of getting the cost down by sharing storage and other facilities across multiple different methods of carbon removal. It's not just, hey, let's do a one-off storage and direct air capture facility here and one all the way over there. It's let's have a hub where all these shared storage, uh, where all these shared resources and, and storage all get plugged into by multiple different methods of carbon removal. We love that vision. That's where we're going to Pittsburgh next week. So Adina, Jason, and I are headed to the U.S. Department of Energy's big uh, carbon removal conference this year. We're meeting with leaders of direct air capture companies, storage companies, and organizations involved in building out this direct air capture hub vision. And we're excited about developing shared storage as the model to really get the, the cost of direct air capture rapidly lower. So my question for you are, if you're working in direct air capture or you're working in storage, does storage matter for you right now? How are you seeing this? Can, are you able to get customers without having storage lined up? Are you able to get investors without having storage lined up? Uh, and finally, maybe you have a solution to this. Maybe you're working on uh, some sort of storage solution or some sort of other way of, of, of solving for this. Or maybe you know somebody working on a solution. Uh, I would love to hear from you about that.